This is Precalc 11, Chapter 3.3. This time we'll be using square roots to solve quadratic equations. And we're going to be doing another solution using completing the square. We can use square roots if we isolate a square term on one side and a constant term on the other side. And this is just regular algebra operations. So we isolate the x squared term on one side and we isolate the constants on the other. So this is 4x squared equals, this is positive 7 plus 2, so that's 9. So x squared equals 9 over 4, dividing both sides by 4. x is equal to, recall that we have to have plus or minus, square root is 9 over 4. So x equals plus or minus 3 over 2. Now, notice how we say plus or minus. It's not plus and minus. That's another reason why we had or in our previous chapter. Okay, so we move the 14 over to the other side. So we have 3x minus 2 squared equals 27. This still isn't isolated, so we need to divide both sides by 3 x minus 2 squared equals 9. Now we take the square root of both sides, and we're left with x minus 2 equals plus or minus 3. So x equals, the 2 becomes a positive 2. So it's 2 plus or minus 3. So 2 minus 3 is minus 1. And 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. These are quadratics, so there's no need to check for extraneous roots. We expect to have two roots for a quadratic. We can actually have one double root, or we can have no real roots. Now, notice that if we expand the second example, we get an x term. Notice here we don't have an x term and we can just take the square root. So if we expand, we get this. And if we expand again, we get 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 minus 27 equals 0. And we get 3x squared minus 12x. 12 minus 27 is minus 15. And now we can factor, and we should get the same answer. 3, factor 3 out, minus 4, and that's negative 5. Divide both sides by 3, we get x squared, negative 4x, minus 5. And again, when it's 1 less than this constant term, we can easily factor this. So x equals 5 or x equals negative 1, which is the same answer here. Another way we can solve when we have an x term is to complete the square. So what we have to do is we have to isolate just the x terms. So x squared plus 4x. And we leave some space. So to complete this, we need to divide this by 2 and then square it. So 4 divided by 2 and squaring is 4. OK, here's the trick. Because we've added 4, we need to subtract 4 outside. We need to balance the equation. So here we're adding 4 minus 4, and that's equal to 0. So because we're adding 0, we're not changing the equation. So uh, going through this again, b is equal to 4. That's our b. And 4 equals b. 
be over 2 squared. So dividing by 2 and squaring it. That's 4 over 2 squared, which equals 2 squared, and that's 4. This becomes x plus 2 squared. We have a negative 2 minus 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Bring that over to the other side, and it's just 2. Now we can take the square root of both sides. x plus 2 equals square root 2 plus or minus. So x equals negative 2. This 2 becomes negative plus or minus root 2 x equals negative 2 minus root 2, or x equals negative 2 plus root 2. And if the leading coefficient, a, doesn't equal 1, then we need to factor. And this is where students will make a mistake. So let's factor 3 x squared. We factor out a 3, so that's negative 4. x, leave a space. So we divide that by 2 and square it. So negative 2 squared, that's 4. Now, what are we adding? We're adding 3 times 4, that's 12. Since we're adding 12, we need to balance by subtracting 12. Okay, you're always adding a zero. Adding nothing doesn't change the equation. Okay, so we have 3x minus 2 squared equals, this is negative 12 plus 8, that's negative 4, but it becomes positive 4 on the other side. Again, we haven't isolated this yet, so we need to divide both sides by 3. And now we can take the square root of both sides. Plus or minus, 4 over 3. And you should simplify the radical. x minus 2 equals plus or minus 2 root 3 over 3. Now we can bring the negative 2 over to the other side. x equals 2 plus or minus 2 root 3 over 3. And we can write our solution, x equals 2 minus 2 root 3 over 3, or x equals 2 plus 2 root 3 over 3. And in case you didn't get this part, square root of 4 is 2. We need to rationalize the denominator, so we need to multiply the top by root 3, root 3 on on the bottom, it's root 3 times root 3, that's just 3. And this process is a little bit longer, but it produces exact results and not approximate answers. So it's easy to tell if you're using your calculator or doing the math by hand. Let's look at a harder example. A hard example has a negative sign out front. So we factor out the negative 2, x squared. 12 divided by negative 2 is minus 6x. We leave a blank space. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Square it, we have 9. So we are adding negative 2 times 9. That's negative 18. So we have to add a positive 18. Okay, so you don't have to write this out. I'm just explaining it. Your answer should include this, though. Now we have negative 2, x minus 3 squared equals, and this is 18 minus 15, so that's 3. Bring it over to the other side, we have negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 2, x minus 3 squared equals 3 over 2, and x minus 3 
We take the square root of both sides, plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So we have x equals, this becomes 3 on the other side, 3 plus or minus. We need to rationalize the denominator, multiply the numerator by square root of 2. So that's square root 6 over 2. So our final answer is x equals 3 minus root 6 over 2, or x equals 3 plus square root 6 over 2. Please write your square root sign correctly. It should not include the denominator. So things to be aware of. We have x squared equals negative 3. When we take the square root of this side, it's x. This is plus or minus the square root of negative 3. Please leave the negative sign inside like this. Our answer is no solution. It's incorrect, incorrect to move, to move plus or minus negative root 3. So it's incorrect to move this negative sign outside. And it's no solution because negative 3 is not in the domain. of the square root function. And for word problems, negative answers are generally extraneous because the variable is usually representing time or length. And as you recall, we don't have negative time or negative length. And that completes this lesson.